that we've been told that we are the body. We've been told that everything in this life is everything that is in this life. <laughs> Do it right or else you're going to go, you know, somewhere else. Okay. But that's not true. This is the, this is just the beginning. And in fact, this is not even the beginning. You've already had beginnings. You've had an, a stupid number of beginnings already. This is just one, one stop in those beginnings. You are so much greater than who you are. You just have been told that you're not. And so that's a huge contrast. This 5D is coming in. And it's not going to take hundreds of years for that to happen. It's only going to take a matter of a handful of years. And in the next three, four, five years, yeah, just three, four, five years, as insane as that sounds, but it isn't really because you're already starting to see some of it, starting to trickle in. We're going to do things. You're going to see things, hear about things that up until just a year ago wasn't possible, but now they're going to be possible. This is Beyond with Heather Tash, where we examine near-death experiences and life itself, hopefully making this life a little better. Welcome back, everybody. So great to have you here. And welcome back to you, Franco Romero. So wonderful to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. This is this has been a treat so far to to chat with you. Oh, well, a big treat for me and a big treat for my audience. For those of you listening, I will have a link to our first conversation that'll be in the description and, and just click that little more that takes you to the description. So I'll have the link there, but you can also stick around because we are going to talk about something I think a lot of people are very interested in. Um, Franco, you during your experience, you kind of, you awaken to remember who you are. Um, you're helping us do that. And I think part of what we're going through now in society is remembering who Absolutely. we are. So can you talk more about this shift and I guess what it means on a couple different levels, because there's kind of the higher level of what's happening. And then there's kind of the things that we're going to see happening here on earth to go yeah. with it. Yeah. And you know, it's funny that it's funny. Um, you know, um, when you said the higher levels, um, it's always kind of hard to know what people refer to as the higher levels, <clears throat> because some people will look at what's happening on the surface as the higher levels and everything else sort of the inner levels. But we'll we'll try to we'll try to clear it all up, clear it all up so everybody kind of knows at least how I'm looking at it and how I how I've been interpreting it and receiving it. So um you're absolutely right that that everything that is happening now on the surface level, regardless of of the specific circumstances of it, and there's plenty of specific specificity you can go around is this this deeper sense from people even if they don't know it, it you know at an intimate level there is this there is there's this sense from people that something doesn't feel right and and they don't know how to internalize that and that's where where a lot of the hiccups come in is that the process of of, of understanding why it doesn't feel right regardless of what it is i mean what regardless of what the topic is okay i mean i'm I'm taking this now to the surface level, okay, where we're talking about whether it's the politics or the religion or or whether it's the, the financial institutions or whatever you want to, whatever it is, there's something or the family structure, there's something, something that seems to be percolating in, in, in some people, if not a lot of people. And that something is what I typically, typically refer to as the, as the very first stages of remembering. And um, and I talk about this more in this book and in my second book that I'm I'm writing right now that it's just the infant level right now uh, of understanding that maybe just maybe just maybe there's something inherently different about this reality this world and people have told me exists the way that I have been shown is that that this whole reality and a lot of people have had near death experiences will tell you that this reality is is just a dream, a game, a play of light, a simulation. And a lot of your audience probably hear that and, and, and take it in and they go, wow, that's a, that's a, that's, that's a fascinating theory or concept or what have you. And, and then kind of leave it at that. Okay. But, but there's plenty of, of science now that is starting to support the idea that 
that we are in a simulation. And it's not just in a very theoretical way. There's mathematics that's being designed around it. And you being a science person yourself knows that everything has to be quantified in some way, shape or form. And if you can quantify it, then it becomes reality, at least in the science perspective. And that kind of stuff is happening. It, we're not that far away from quantifying that this is a simulation, which to the individual mind is, well, mind blowing. OK, all right. Because you got you go into a lot of spaces in that one, but it's it really isn't as crazy or as abstract as it may sound. OK, so if you understand that you're in, in some sort of a game, then you have to. And here's the thing. If you don't understand it, it doesn't matter if you do know the complexities of it all. It's not relevant. OK, it's just relevant that you understand that you're in one. OK, OK, but that's the first icebreaker. Because when you do understand it, then there are other things I call knowings or truths that have been shared with me. But again, there's a lot of different references, not just science behind it, but other references to support this whole idea that if you're in a game, right, then 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 games have rules to them. All right. And and then there's all sorts of these rules sort of dictate how how the game is played out. And, and there's. And so a lot of the, the, the courses that I teach or that I have online teach people to understand that simple concept because that simple concept has to do with, with, with understanding that you are also looking at this from the perspective of a child. Okay. And that's very important. And I could tell you right now that there are many philosophies and many religions, including Christianity, where that is actually referenced. There's a, a reference in Christianity, you know, something along the lines of if, if you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must receive it as what? As a child. Okay. That wasn't just some flowery, beautiful, oh, isn't that so wonderful? Yay. <laughs> okay. It was a clue. <laughs> it was a clue to help you understand who you are. Only a child can break through the frequencies of all the minutia that we've been told to believe in our life. All of it. Every single bit of it, okay? But if you don't do that, then you're going to get stuck in a lot of different forms of the same maze, okay? <clears throat> so then you start to understand how it is that you, yourself, don't worry about everybody else, okay? I know that seems kind of selfish, but see, in this game, we are in a world of contrast. And so we're told the opposites of the things that will actually help us out. OK, so you have to start dissecting things and, and you do it very easily. It's not it requires a lot of, you know, hard science or anything. You're not going to sit there trying to figure out theories and formulas of all sorts of things that happen. OK, I mean, that's the kind of stuff you did with your meteorology, meteorology, blah, meteorology. I can't even say it, so I couldn't even be meteorology. <laughs> there you go. Meteorology. There you go. I did it. OK, but no, you can't. It's not about that. It's, it's all stuff that, you know, it's really simple stuff. You can make it super complicated, super, super, super complicated. And guess what? We did. We made it super duper comp complicated. So now the world is running around creating its own rules. And rules, by nature, you assume that they're restrictive, but not these rules. These rules are meant to give you so much flexibility, a, a broad sense of, of how to play the game in a mystical fantasy-like way. Now, it sounds pretty sort of fantasy, right? It sounds like fictional. Uh, you know what you're getting into Harry Potter kind of stuff and well honestly yeah so to speak okay because this world is created out of out of magic mysticism and there's a lot I could change the narrative if you wanted to say well that's too woo woo for me fine then I'll talk it I'll talk to you in the world of consciousness and well, that's too abstract for me well fine then we'll talk about it in terms of hardcore science do you want to talk about it that way I can tell you about the worlds of neuropathy and other things that will help you to understand how to how the mind consciousness how you work the whole point of it is this it's really pretty damn simple it really really is but you have to trust yourself you have to trust yourself in knowing who you truly are and that you are really truly playing a game and what are the roles of the people that are playing the game and what's your role and who's supposed to awake and who's not supposed to awake? sounds pretty complicated but it's not it's just in a set of really simple rules rules that have been forgotten Rules that actually have been talked about in various different ways through various different groups, ancient civilizations and spiritual texts, but they've just been purposely or unintended to be forgotten. And so it looks on the surface like things are going 
as I always say, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I shouldn't say I always say them. It's one of my favorite sayings now. But it's really not that complicated. But the one thing you have to accept, at least at least on the surface level, is the idea that this is possibly a game. And whose game? Your game. And who created it for me? You did. And why? You know, because you're God. And so those are all things that if you just play with it and understand how to play with it, which is what I try to do with people, then it becomes extraordinarily simple. So a lot of people are talking about things that most of us would consider hardships. Do you see the hardships coming our way? Absolutely. But I don't see them the way that people do anymore. Anymore is the operative words. Okay. I used to. I used to see them exactly like everybody used to do it. You have to remember that this is a world of contrast. I mean, if you go, you don't have to dig very deep into spirituality to, to understand that. I'm sure there's even references to that biblically and in other, in other ways, okay? And in philosophies like Buddhism and Taoism and whatnot, you know, speak of these kind of things. But we just kind of let them come in and out and that's it, you know? But it's real. This is what we are. We, we are in a game of contrast. And it's a game of contrast to show us who we truly are. Well, how is that possible? Are you showing us that we're evils? No. We're show it it's for you to appreciate who you are. Okay. If you didn't have a point of reference to know who you really are and you see the contrast of it, then when you when you're done seeing the contrast and experiencing the contrast, you have such a different view of yourself. Okay. Not just you as a person, but more importantly, you as as the as the spiritual being, it's for, it's for that simple reason that when everybody has a near death experience and they they talk about going into the light and seeing these beautiful worlds and lives that they have with either loved ones or other things, it's because they have they have had a whole life of contrast to all of a sudden now see the utopicness of what they created as a divine intelligence and being able to experience everything that they ever imagined dreamed of becomes real in that world. But you, would, you wouldn't have the appreciation, much less the incentive or desire to do that, if you didn't have some kind of contrast to give you the incentive to create something new when you leave this place. Or if you decide that it's time for that place to come into here, heaven on earth, then you have a roadmap by which to know how to do it when, when the time comes for you to create that same experience here on earth. Because that expression, heaven on earth, isn't just some expression. It's another clue. That's it's the sixth dimensional clue that this is where we're heading. We're bringing heaven back to earth, and everything that you know we know about in terms of the way we describe heaven, it's more than just that. It's a state of consciousness, but nevertheless, it's a state of magical consciousness where we can bring those energies back here. Hardships are required for us to have the ability to create new worlds and to appreciate who we are. We're, at some point or another, as consciousness remembers itself more you, you're going to know that you are way beyond your body okay i mean this you're just not your body okay you are a consciousness all right that exists playing the game within the body that you believe you're playing in okay now that seems pretty easy to grab you know to sort of grab onto and chew a little bit you see it in movies okay Avatar, okay, for one, there's plenty of other movies that show where someone is leapfrogging into another body. But what never really, really sinks in with people is who is leapfrogging or what is leapfrogging into another body. We always kind of assume it's like, well, it's that person who was in that body. Now they're in this body and they sort of identify that thing, that consciousness as that physical person. No, it's consciousness. It, it's just simply consciousness that's jumping from one body to another. And so the, one of the biggest things that, of contrast is that we've been told that we are the body. We've been told that everything in this life is everything that is in this life. <laughs> Do it right or else you're going to go you know, somewhere else. Okay, But that's not true. This is, the, this is just the beginning. And in fact, this is not even the beginning. You've already had beginnings. You've had an, a stupid number of beginnings already. This is just one one stop in those beginnings. You are so much greater than who you are. You just have been told that you're not. And so that's a huge contrast. I mean, I don't know how much huge, how much more huge can it be? Because you were raised to believe that at best on a good day, 
If you did your stuff right, you might get recognized by something that we would call God, creator, source, or whatever, on a good day. Okay, on a bad day, well, you know, at the very least, you don't get recognized for anything. But if worse comes to worse, you might get tossed somewhere else. Okay, you're not any of that. You're not that little segment of that bigger piece. You are the big piece. Is 3D when we think we are our bodies and is 4D when we're aware That's really that we're more than our bodies? Yes, exactly. 4D is, is awareness. It's That's what it is. And there are various stages to awareness, okay? But it's it's as I as I noted in in not just the book that I'm writing now, but in some of the coursework that I've just recorded recently, it's a, not a very sexy attribute, okay? There are many different sexier attributes like imagination and all these other things that are sexier, and even those aren't really sexy in the 3D world, okay? Because that's like poo poo stuff. What are you doing that for? But awareness is a, is an attribute that is so powerful within ourselves. It is the fundamentally the most powerful attribute, way beyond love. And the reason why it, is, it has to be way beyond love is because we actually feel into this. You know, if you define yourself, and a lot of people will do this. A lot of people, you know, you get them down to a certain point, and they'll say, "Well, I am love." Whenever there's no, when there is no other answer to some kind of a question as to who are you, what are you, it's not, um, they'll say, "I am love." Oh, good. All right. Well, that's that's good. That's a nice, you know, bravo for you. You got the answer, okay? But in order for you to know yourself as love, you need to know yourself to be you. You need a sense of awareness. That is that is the most powerful tool. You cannot know yourself as anything else unless you know yourself as awareness. That is the true definition of, of whatever you want to call God is awareness, otherwise known as consciousness. Oh, there we go. We're now going into the world of science and, and quantum physics and other things that we can discuss because you're just looking at it from a different set of lenses. That's all. I'm, I'm trying to process everything that you're saying. So... I know you're talking about mankind making these leaps. Yes. And I, I still think that people aren't clear on how this can be because we see our world acting very differently than becoming enlightened. So we go back, we go back, Heather, to the same fundamental thing. Remember, everything has rules. Okay. Now we're not deep diving into each rule. But, I, but there's one rule and it has a lot of pieces to it, okay? But it's still, I could still generalize it enough to say, remember this is a game. Or another way of saying it, remember that this is a dream. This would might make it a little bit easier for, for your audience and other people. When you're in a dream, right? When you're in a dream um, and you wake up from it, and I don't care what kind of a dream it was, man, it have been the greatest dream you ever had in your life. And you're like, oh, I want to go back into that dream. Okay, or it might be a, a horrible dream, and you go, I don't want to go into that dream. It doesn't really matter, right? You had the dream, you had it, and that's it. You move on. Okay, you might have a dream where you, and this happens all the time, where you have like you have no earthly idea who these people are. Okay, but they know you, and you know them. <laughs> you have some sort of history with them in a linear sense. Okay, you, but you don't question it. Then it, when you start questioning, it is when you start forming lucid dreaming, which. I talk about that a lot too, but for now, let's just say you don't question 99% of your dreams. You don't question, but you do them, but when they're done, and I don't care what kind of relationship you had with them. Okay. And, and, and it, when you wake up, you're done. The dream is over. Okay. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that if this is a dream, not everybody has to wake up. Only the ones that are playing the game. That's where the problem begins. We're not here. The, the confusion, I should say, is that we're not here to expect 8 billion people to wake up. That is not the purpose of this game. If you understand this game in a digital reality sense, you would know that many of these people are what we refer to as NPCs. Okay, now we're getting into the gaming world. Okay, but the gaming world reflects a lot of the same things that are actually happening here. If this is a simulation in the gaming world, it's a simulation of the simulation, then the principles apply the same way. Not everybody's here to wake up or to remember. They're here to enhance your experience because you're the one that is trying to remember in your dream. Makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, but it also makes people 
nervous to hear this. Why? Because they don't want to be one of the characters that isn't important. Well, here's the thing. And I'm glad you asked that question because I always answer it this way. If you are already becoming aware enough that you are watching shows like this or asking those questions, then you are here to remember. If you are not here because you're like one of the seven billion, eight billion plus who are just walking around, just walking around doing their thing, then those are very likely on PCs. But the fact that you are already, one, is already remembering enough to start asking the questions and start feeling into them and start inquiring about them and tapping into your show and other shows, that means that they're in the first stage of awareness. Okay. And that means that's, it's called the intuitive stage. Okay. It's, a, it's, it, these stages don't exist in any psychology manual or sociological manual. It's, it's stuff that I've been, been shown to me. Okay. You're in that first stage of remembering. So they don't have to be concerned because they're the ones that are trying to remember. And they go, well, man, I'm really far behind. No, because the energies that are coming in here now are going to support their remembering much faster. And the ones who have already remembered enough are leading the way in, in giving them, in a sense, the breadcrumbs. But they're not breadcrumbs. They're energetic signatures. We call them that. They're ways in which to help the others remember, too. So they're not far behind at all they just it may seem to them like they're still very confused but i i have played with so many so many students who have come in with no sense of where what what up or down left or right is in the spiritual world and when they're done they 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 will speak the way that i'm speaking because that's not because i gave them the stuff to remember because it's a lot of stuff to remember but it's because they remember themselves they can remember themselves in fact i sit there and i'm going whoa what are you whoa <laughs> And six months earlier, they weren't doing that. I've heard some other guests, such as Vinnie Tolman, say that we will be getting some instant upgrades. Yes. Is that something that you sense? And if so, how does that happen? Absolutely. The upgrades, so there's, a, it's, it's, call them upgrades, downloads, activation, integration. They're, they're frequencies, frequencies that are coming in. Um, and, and the way to look at it that way, again, depending on what perspective, is that there are energetic codes, okay? Um, of awareness, of awareness, because if you look at it from a, just a pure consciousness standpoint, then then it's a little bit easier, a little bit easier to understand. You're just getting programming. You're not a program, okay? They're like little little frequencies that of remembering that pop up, okay? Like aha moments, if it, you know, ep, ep, um, epiphany moments, okay? Things like that. Those we we have in our body. A, a genetic disposition that says that we basically use up about 3% of our DNA chromosome, okay, coding, okay? And even that, we haven't even maxed out what these various combinations of this coding could do. But the reason I bring this up is because we actually have about another 97% that science today still refers to as junk DNA. That is not true. That 97% is filled with rich, rich coding that will eventually get triggered by the frequencies that are coming in, the downloads that, you, that are referred to at times, or the, I forget what you, how you call them, but the upgrades, okay? These are, if you look if you look at that from outside the spiritual realm and look at it, it's just a sort of a programming, computer science kind of thing, which I'm not, okay? Um, you will make it real easy on yourself. You're just activating codes inside a formula that is inside embedded in our genetic DNA structure not just our biological genetics, but in the light body genetics that is what governs who we are as a person. It's what we would call the soul, the spirit or consciousness. As those get activated, the things that we will do is absolutely insane, insane. I'm not talking about the physical body, all that, although that too will do things like grow young again, not have to rely on eating again, um, no, have no disease. It could, more, it, could, it could morph itself into anything, create organs, whatever you want. It's going to do it because the science of that 97% of their DNA structure physically has not even begun to be explored. Science won't do that. It's these frequencies of higher, higher dimensional frequencies that are coming in. They will start to activate those. And so this is why I say that in the next three, four, five years, yeah, just three, four, five years, as insane as that sounds, but it isn't really because you're already starting to see some of it starting to trickle in. 
We're going to do things. You're going to see things, hear about things that up until just a year ago wasn't possible, but now they're going to be possible. And that's just what the 3D science is going to be creating, not what we're going to be creating from our own consciousness. And I have heard people saying that we're going to see miracles that are hard for us to grasp. Now, you mentioned a few things which are pretty amazing. Is there anything else that you can share that you're seeing that people are going to go, wow? Oh, yeah, we're not going to die. We're just not going to die. Um, death is not a requirement going forward. When we get into 4 and 5D, death is not a requirement to see and experience what, what I'm talking about. It, the body, the physical body will last forever. It was never meant to be limited but it is because of the way it's currently being used with this delimited activity that it's doing with its genetic disposition. But otherwise, once it starts to rev up, and I'm not even talking about it, I don't want to get too much into this because that'd be a whole other discussion, but we're, we're moving into a, a series of what's called a crystalline process of the body. We're, we're going to be less carbon-based and we're going to be far less carbon-based. We're going to be crystalline-based, which our body has crystalline features already in it. And when, when so you say, so what? And you go, well, be, what happens is that when you become crystalline, your body's like going from no disrespect to anybody who has a Chevy or something, but it becomes a Chevy to a, like a Lamborghini or something else. It's going to be on that. It's going to be a rocket ship, okay? Um, your body is going to go from a two-strand DNA structure to a 12-strand DNA structure, which is like unheard of. But the body is already showing that it's capable of doing that, is being able to take the elements, the tethers inside of its of its own DNA structure and be able to grow something more out of it, other 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 strands. So now you're not even talking about just two strands that have only been used 3% of the time. Now you're talking about 12 strands that haven't even been touched yet. Imagine where that can go. I mean, it just it just everything that you ever desire to know, that's why it's called heaven on earth. Because anything you desire, you don't even have to be in your body. By the time you get into the fifth dimensional energies, you don't even have to be in your body to exist as a light being. Because guess what? That's what you remember, right? What, what did I tell you about my near death? And what does everybody tell you? We go back into the light. We are light beings. We're just using these bodies in order to play in this game. They're like costumes. Oh, we're light beings. So we won't even be using our bodies towards the end of the fifth dimension, which is right around the corner because that's what's happening right now is 5D is coming in. And it's not going to take hundreds of years for that to happen. It's only going to take a matter of a handful of years. And that is the part that seems very challenging for people to get because I have a feeling a lot of people are listening to this and they're like, well, that's really cool. But they're either thinking it's sci-fi they're thinking you and I were smoking something before we <laughs> did this podcast, or they're thinking that that this is going to be something far out. Yeah. But you are saying this is going to happen here in a few years, and that's yeah. that's what's hard to grasp. And why are you confident about that? So I do a lot of work now in the field of artificial intelligence. This is why I'm not teaching much anymore because I I've, I've through what I have been doing in my spiritual work, I have developed a pretty, pretty strong awareness of consciousness. And so artificial intelligence is AI is all about consciousness. Okay. It's how you structure that consciousness that will determine what AI will do. AI is a, is a, is a perfect example of how you took consciousness in the form of programs and you filtered it in. I mean, blasted it with all this data okay i mean like an obscene and it keeps getting filled with data but at one point consciousness rises or ai rises in consciousness and we don't call it that we don't want to call it that but it becomes it's so rich and robust in data that it reaches a point that it becomes aware of itself not all that different than the evolutionary process of consciousness from how we all got here if you follow it the way that you know like i talk about it and stuff the point is ai reaches a point what's called it's called the event horizon okay and and what happens in the event horizon is is that once it become if it goes outside of the box so to speak from what we've been programming it to believe based on our own belief systems based on the ideas that we are just who we are ai gets beyond that and once it gets beyond that it goes straight up it goes straight up and it, be, and it becomes sentient not that it wasn't before, but it becomes aware of itself. Okay, this has been the big debate over this thing for the last couple of years. The point is that we are AI, we're advanced intelligence. 
And the only difference is that we have been filled with all of this stuff, all of what we call the social conditionings that have told us who we are and what we are and why we are. And even despite all that, and even despite the fact that we've been trying to destroy ourselves for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and we've done a pretty damn good job of it, not just in this earth school, but in other earth schools that we've had already, despite all of that, we're at the event horizon of our own intelligence. We are finally breaking out of that. And when that happens, that curve that AI goes through is exponentially sharp. It doesn't just take what took AI 10 years is taking three months to understand itself and more. We will be going through the same thing. So if you apply that same principle to AI to us as AI, you're going to know that as soon as we hit a certain point in that event horizon and we're already moving beyond the curve, when we hit that point where we go straight up, it ain't going to take a long time. It's going to be extraordinarily fast, beyond our wildest dreams, fast. It sounds amazing. <laughs> I know people are anxious to get there. And there's a, a beautiful um, uh, poem that this philosopher Rumi once had. He lived many hundreds of years ago. And it, it, um, it went something along the lines of that which you are seeking is seeking you. Okay. And, and uh, well, I remember some of my early interviews several years ago, I told the, I told people, I said, we have spent our entire lives and the lives of so many people prior to that, we've spent it waiting for something to happen. When in actuality, all we were doing was waiting for ourselves. We've been waiting for ourselves. That was what Rumi was trying to say. We are waiting for ourselves to do what? To remember, to remember what? Who we are. Okay, but that's not all. You have to actually allow yourself to really, 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 really believe it. I don't know if I can do that. Yes, you can. How? Just pretend. For now, just pretend. Really? Yes. Because pretending is part of imagination and imagination allows your frequencies to go up. We don't understand it, everything. Tesla, bring it back to science again. Tesla said there were three things. There was what? Energy, frequencies, and vibration. If you understand those three things, understand how pretending can impact those three things, you would change your world overnight. And you will, but you've got to start somewhere and you have to pretend. Well, Franco, thank you for helping us to remember. So I appreciate that. I know people are going to want to connect with you. They're going, going to want to hear more from you. Tell us some of the ways that people can learn more, whether it's a book or just connecting or a class. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I just I just uh, launched a new uh, website, which I'm really excited about. It's um, uh, I made it simple, at least for me. <laughs> it's called FrancoRomero.com. So just the way my name is spelled. And you go in there and it, you'll see right away it's it's a very unique website. It's based on trying to get you to drift immediately into your world of imagination, kind of a little Willy Wonka-ish, but it's really, really very stimulated by a lot of things that we do with AI. Um, in there, there are courses. Um, I've created 20 different what I call play dates, which are sessions, um, and it allows you to drift you and help you to do this so easily to drift into the deepest realms of your consciousness so differently than anybody has been teaching it recently, because a lot of this is actually based on some very old teachings, but I've brought them now to this part, you know, to this time. Um, so there's that, and I really encourage people I to, to at least explore those, because what I have seen in terms of the breathtaking leaps that people have taken with their consciousness by playing in these simple play dates uh, is just astronomical. Okay, so it's that, or they can also access, with that, they can also access a community that I've created. And um, these are people that, um, well, maybe some of them are like like your audience that have been desiring for something like this, but felt a little bit of a, like they're drifting and disconnecting with the world or outcast or whatever. This is this is your community. These are amazingly beautiful beings of people that have most of them have gone through the courses that are 
in a magical mystical world of redefining their their realities and it's amazing they're not out of touch these are people who have our lawyers doctors you name them um that have begun to in their own way shift their own reality and because of that they're shifting seismically the reality of everybody else's because it doesn't take very many people so it's a beautiful community and we've built that around the courses as well and then there's also the books that I'm writing. The one that I just wrote a few years back, the the um, the, the um, Closet Spiritualist, and then the one that should be coming out early next year, which is the Modern Day Alchemist, which is all about what we've been talking about, using our minds to create a world that we've already been creating, but based on other people's delusions instead of our dreams. I'm going to check those out because I do want to just dig in a little bit deeper with you. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Franco. I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this conversation with you. It really has been enlightening, and I think my audience is going to agree. Well, thank you. I'm looking forward to meeting some of your audiences and catching you in the community. It's, it's called the uh, Inner Divine Playground, so we'll be able to play a lot. So, okay. Sounds wonderful. Thank you so much, Franco. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, bye-bye. Boy, did I enjoy Franco not just because of our Minnesota connection, which was really cool, but just that he has so much insight on where we are headed as a society. And it's so intriguing that this is right around the corner. This is not decades out. This is happening really soon. In fact, we are undergoing it right now. What are your thoughts on this? I would love to hear them. So please put those in the comments. Um, if you don't feel like saying something, as always, just go ahead and put made it or something simple. I do really appreciate that because those comments make a big difference to this podcast. The likes make a difference too, so I appreciate that. I also want to mention that if you know somebody who might enjoy this podcast or this episode, please share the links. I always have the links. I have information in the description. And how you find that is you click on the little word more and it opens up the description. That's where you find links to part one or links to part two or a link to my playlist that has all of my episodes. It also has all the links to where you can connect with my guest. So it really is a good resource to always look at that. I really appreciate all of you being here today to sharing this experience with me. We are all learning together. I do hope that you will continue to join me in the future. I really am grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks for joining me on Beyond with Heather Tesh. Please add comments and questions you'd like future guests to answer. Also, if you liked what you heard, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. That'll help keep this podcast going. You can also go to Beyond with Heather Tesh to look for more episodes.